Um, Gavin promised to heal me uh, this afternoon, so I'm going to look at it. The, um, I just thought I'd um, point out, because it's just a happy coincidence that I know it must that uh, bodes well. The, um, the logo on the right is actually the same one as on my hat. It's the uh, Wynar uh, Australasia Agency logo. It's obviously the same as you did later awards. Um, and I assume it means uh, it stands for some sort of thing, you know, just like a flash of inspiration, an amazing idea. Um, we don't usually use our, our Wynar um, New Zealand logo on a lot of our work for presenting clients. We actually just give them this logo on the front of the document. Um, we kind of feel like it, it represents um, what our work's all about and what they come to us for. And we just, we're very we're very proud to just be able to produce what we do down to just a great idea. And I think that kind of says you know, how we focus as an agency. Um, when Badong uh, invited me to, to come to uh, Boracay and to get that awards, um, he said, you know, he said to me that Kidlet's all about, you know, Kidlet strikes back, and to interpret that, it's creativity um, strikes back. And I think, you know, I'll show you a few examples of sort of how we've gone about that um, in our in our agency. Um, but I think, you know, the, the really important thing from probably 2016 is to is to take heart. You know, creativity is absolutely um, striking back probably after a, a long time. Um, listening to the digital agencies say that they've got all these new widgets and, and you know, they've got some amazing stuff. Um, and the media agencies taking um, a lot of our probably control of where our ideas go um, away. Um, what we've done is managed to take um, a lot of the power back um, by just using brilliant ideas um, and putting them in the right places um, ourselves as an agency and you know, bypassing a lot of what the media guys do. And I think you know the key. The key to that is what we always talk to clients about, which is earned, earned media, right? Which is just a really cool idea that people pay attention to without it being necessarily a book or a TV commercial. And I think that's you know, that's that's the absolute key. You've got to back your concept. You've got to look at your idea and make sure people are going to talk about it. And I think you know the question before, you know, how do you judge um, the difference between a great idea and a good idea? Is you now would your mum? Will your mum end up knowing about uh, about your idea? Um, that's that's what we do. We kind of go, is this idea good enough that my mum's actually going to end up seeing it? My mum's going to like it. My mum's, no, my mum's going to pay attention because your mum is is the consumer, you know, or is a good example of who the consumer and could be. You know? So if you don't, if your mum's not going to see it, chances are your ideas maybe just made for advertising as opposed to people. Um, Kidback Strikes Back sounds to me a, a lot like a, uh, a Star Wars film. So I thought I'd use a, some uh, Star Wars sort of examples uh, to give you a sense of how I see the last uh, sort of 20 years um, and how we've got to the point where you know, digital and, um, and media seems like they have a whole lot of power. Um, and probably an example of how I think things are changing and we're, we're doing the power back. So this first image um, is sort of headshots an agency from, from the 80s. And um, everyone's all happy and they're working together. Um, we're all friends, there's, you know, there's creative, there's media, there's some early sort of digital people. Um, and then by the 90s, you can kind of see that the, that the media guys are kind of showing the true colors. They're, they're, not, quite, they're not quite yelling <laughs> with the creative guys. You know, they're a little bit, um, they're a little bit dark. You can see that they're, they're not quite happy, they're trying to move away. Um, and then we get to 2000, and you know, swords are drawn. Um, yeah, shit's getting tense. Um, we get to uh, you know, 2005, and the media people really show their true colors. You know, they've built a whole lot of really dodgy shit, um, and they're scaring a lot of people with it. Um, at the same time, along comes digital. <laughs> you know, these guys, I mean, it's no, it's still to this day, I don't know what this guy's saying. Um, I'm not sure whether clients you know, really, really buy into uh, a lot of a lot of what he's what he's planning on about. Um, so that's kind of takes us to about 2010. Um, so we've got kind of media guys you know, telling us they've got all the tech, be afraid, and we've got some, some random stuff coming from the digital people. Uh, and then so you know 2013, 
we're having a bit of a bit of a headache. It's all getting a bit confusing. Um, we're sort of we're sort of struggling. Uh, we're a bit worried. Uh, and then you know we get a shit together and realise that you know, these guys are all they're all kind of talking uh, some form of bullshit. And it's kind of time to take take some action. Um, and then 2016 comes along, and I think it's a bit of a turning point from a from a creative point of view. So by 2016, you know, we've got uh, a lot of PR-based, um, really strong, amazing ideas that don't need incredible digital um, sort of back end. Um, they don't need uh, amazing amounts of tech, media, they're just great ideas. Right? And it feels like in the last sort of 20, 24, 36 months, we've really started to redefine what we do as creators again. You know, amazing big ideas uh, that people talk about, that people love, that spread themselves, they don't rely on TV, you still use TV, you know, they don't rely on outdoor, they just rely on a, a great thought. Um, and then, as the guys were saying earlier, you know, a hell of a lot of passion to make these thoughts happen. Um, so I thought I'd just give you a, a bit of a snapshot of kind of what we do at y &R. And you know, and sometimes I really do look at it as, you know, the ideas, um, I kind of like the force, right? It's, it's sort of a bit magical. You've got to believe in it. Um, you've got to back them. You know, when a client sort of starts to question things, you've got to say, you know, no, nah, this this really will work. Um, and you've got to put in the put in the hard yards. Um, and you just yeah, it's got a really to make it happen. So I'll show you a few a few examples. So you obviously know Macquarie, but I'll, I'll we'll show you that a little bit more in detail. So the first one uh, that we're really proud of is called. Love from Land Rover. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background on this idea, so we had a, a pretty small budget um, by by sort of big idea standards. So that two hundred and fifty grand includes uh, the media budget. Um, we managed to convince the client to spend the entire um, budget on production, a little bit of spend on Facebook, um, and you know it was a bit of a, a bit of a leap for them, but. I I think you know we managed to sell them an idea that was sort of about the Land Rover dream, um, making that you know making a piece of uh, film for massive fans of Land Rovers and, and really um, engaging them at an emotional level, but at an, at an upbeat and emotional uh, level. So it was a big task there. We had to get um, uh, a much greater uh, market share um, on a pretty pretty small budget for a big commercial ad. So I'll show you another. So this film uh, ran on Facebook only, um, but you'll see that within the film there's a whole lot of use of uh, traditional kind of uh, advertising, but it's traditional advertising with a, with a big twist. So we weren't using the traditional advertising in here uh, in order to um, spread the word you know, through reach and frequency in a traditional kind of way. We were, we were using traditional media um, in a really interesting way to get a lot of people talking and then we're putting that traditional media back into our actual film and then putting our film out onto Facebook. So what we find sometimes is just a little bit of traditional, and I mean like one print ad uh, and there's one TV spot in here that's only designed to target four people, that will make sense of um, the Just a little bit of traditional gives an idea, some validity and it creates a talking point um, and it creates, um, it creates great content so sure. These are the keys to four men's hearts. Now this is a true story of love, loss, and the greatest Valentine's gift ever. The journey begins with four old friends pooling student loans to buy their first love, a 1957 Series 1 Land Rover. The good times were abundant, but she fell into disrepair after multiple restoration attempts took a back seat to grown-up obligations. Reluctantly, the lads put her up for sale so that someone else would give her the love she deserved. Land Rover secretly purchased the vehicle, intent on returning her to her former glory, then to her broken-hearted owners. They conducted a clandestine pickup. Go, mate, how are you going? Go, well, James. Hey, mate. Nice, well, to meet you. nice to meet you too. 
turned out she needed a bit more than just a lick of paint. Hey, bye. Hey, bye, bye. Uh, the chassis is in pretty poor condition. It's been hacked around a bit uh, by the previous owners. What else is wrong with it, Glenn? What's right with it? Yeah, that's right. List what's right with it. Okay. They'd brought her back from the brink, and she truly was a thing of beauty, with all her character bumps and bruises preserved, then added to. The next phase, a road test. The vehicle was returned to her spiritual home to make sure she could still handle the rough stuff and relive memories past. all around. So all that remained was to reunite the oblivious owners with the Series 1 that almost got away. Valentine's 2015, a nationwide TV ad announces her return. Oh my god. What? What is going on here? Oh, what? That's it! What is going on? Happy Valentine's Day, lads. Love from Land Rover. You know, Valentine's Day is always media outlets. The news always wants to talk about um, to, to put out a story on Valentine's Day. It's just what they do every year. Um, so what we realised was, you know, who who are the unloved um, sort of victims of Valentine's Day? Obviously, men men never get anything on Valentine's Day. Um, so we kind of went, all right, what is what is the ultimate um, Valentine's Day you know, gift for a guy? And we found we found these guys um, on what's called Trade Me, which is eBay in New Zealand, and they're selling this car, and they've written this letter, and they were genuinely really upset about losing their losing their truck. So you know, this is probably a good example of planning. We started sort of nine months before Valentine's Day, secretly buying a car uh, and rebuilding it and then figuring out, okay, what we need is a, is a partnership. So if we can't you know, work with really good media agencies, because media agencies can be very difficult, um, why don't we go straight to the media owners? So we found um, a TV show that would be putting out a great uh, Valentine's Day article anyway, so that we're spending you know, 10 minutes talking to extremely romantic people about stuff on Valentine's so, Day. And then we said, why don't we give you a much better story? So we worked in partnership with them. So there's hidden cameras in that uh, in that scene in the lounge, obviously, with the guys who are having that car return to them. So that's all done by a TV surgeon. Uh, and then the agency is out the back in the garage with their own set of hidden cameras uh, filming the other half of the, of the content. So surrounding that house is a lot of people hiding in bushes, basically, split um, and uh, and together working with the with the TV stations, you're able to create this great piece of content that you know is going to go to air. So you're not going to then spend a whole lot of money um, putting paying to put it on TV as you traditionally would. Um, as you can see, there's a hell of a lot of uh, of views, um, but probably most importantly, and this shout out to Gavin, we sold all the cars twice as quickly. Um, as we uh, as we need to, which is pretty amazing, and there's an ROI there of nine nine dollars for every dollar spent. So, good example of you know the power of creativity, selling you know, selling the product we need to sell, but doing it in a way that you know makes everyone feel pretty good about themselves, um, and doing it in a way that creates a piece of content uh, that people continue to watch today. So that eight million views I think is about a year ago, and uh, there's still a lot of people watching that. Okay, this next one is a, another example of sort of how to bypass um, traditional media and do something a bit more interesting with a partnership. So, um, Breast Cancer Cure is our only uh, pro bono client. Uh, basically, what these guys do is uh, is you know, cure cancer. That's the that's their job, and they do it without any funding whatsoever. And they do it in New Zealand, where there are twenty seven thousand other charities. We have uh, most number of charities per capita. 
I think New Zealand is obviously just gives a lot of money to charities and encourages people. Um, and so what we did with these guys with absolutely no budget is go and find another a, a commercial partner um, and create a product um, uh, together with them that we can then sell. And uh, basically the, the price difference, we could take about 20% of the, of the, um, of the price uh, difference. So we picked a partner and we sell their milk um, for a hell of a lot of money so they could afford to, uh, to uh, get a little, little donation a little bit So. And then because we've got no budget, all we had to do was, um, all we could afford to do was just change the sticker on the outside of the bottle of milk. So Lewis Road Creamery, for probably all of you who don't know, is just, they just make homogenized milk, but it's sort of organic, remote homogenized milk, so it's very certified. Um, so it's how to do it, yeah, a great PR idea with absolutely no money. Breast milk, not something you'd expect to see in the supermarket fridge, and certainly not a product you'd expect to sell out. A bold milk campaign aimed at raising awareness for breast cancer. Breast milk hit the supermarkets today. 20 cents of that will go to the breast cancer cure. Media experts say the advertising's a shop tactic, which has attracted plenty of publicity. Breast Cancer Cure partnered with Lewis Road Creamery and repackaged their blue top milk as breast milk, the cow's milk that funds the cure. Within 48 hours, breast milk was on everyone's lips and New Zealand made funding the cure part of their everyday routine. Are you enjoying your milk? And just, yeah, yeah, it's fine. And then I showed him the bottle. <laughs> I think it's brave and bold and I like it. It's funding breast cancer research. 100% <laughs> and good on them for thinking of a smart idea, for God's sake. Do I drink breast milk? Of course I do. Publicity, that screams. I think it's a great idea. Publicity. And here I, we I, are talking I, I about it. I think it's a remarkable marketing kill. I drink breast milk. I drink breast milk. I drink breast milk. I drink breast milk. An innovative <laughs> and amusing fundraiser. Breast milk, I drink it every day. The charity Breast Cancer Cure couldn't be happier. It's really hard in the charity sector to get cut through, to get a donation these days, and so uh, we're a very bold cause and we have a bold goal. 85,458 bottles of breast milk were sold. And every bottle contributed to a cure for breast cancer. So, yeah, you can see the stats there. Just, it's just essentially comes down to a great idea and a sticker. Um, yeah. Okay, so this next one, uh, Jaguar X Reality. So uh, we have Land Rover and Jaguar as clients because they're the Wizard One company. Um, and so this was uh, uh, activation uh, created at a, at a event called Big Boys Toys. I'm not sure whether you guys have Big Boys Toys in this part of the world, but it's basically um, kind of where yuppies go to look at expensive things. Um, is the Jaguar F-Type simulator. It's just sitting on a six-axis hydraulic platform here. Roll you around, lift up, down. How <laughs> rough are we getting back? <laughs> Once you're wearing this helmet, that's really gonna simulate exactly what it's gonna be like on the track. Very good. Make sure you brace yourself. Good luck. Okay, Glenn, I'm about to start the ride. Welcome to Jaguar Virtual Simulator. to experience the power of Jaguar F-Type. I was surprised. 
by how real it felt actually. I'm a technician, I listen to the car, and if I didn't know better, I would think that I was in a real car. Acceleration off the marks, just insane. I used to race race cars, I kind of have a feeling of how going at speed feels. It doesn't feel like a simulation. You don't get that acceleration, you don't get that pitch and turn from a normal VR experience. How'd you find that experience? Amazing. <laughs> it was unbelievably oh. cool. No, shut up. Don't lie. You are shitting me. Did you actually drive me around? Did it really go out? No, it didn't, did it? Right. That <laughs> pushed me out on the track. Yeah, well, that actually explains quite a lot. That was good. What an amazing car. Can I do it again? <laughs> do I want one? Yes. <laughs>
Sadly, McDonald's CEO nixed the idea. We love the intention, but think our two brands could do something bigger to make a difference. P.S. A simple phone call will do next time. What an a- Are they stupid? McDonald's! A lot of other chains are wanting in on the fun. Denny's, Crystal, Wayback Burger, and Giraffas are all on board. A pop-up shop will be open for one day only on September 21st. They combine like, a whole bunch of different amazing sandwiches to make one super amazing sandwich. You got big major corporations doing that? Why not small people? Oh, we can do the same thing, you know? Pizza. Pizza. And if you're looking to make the McWhopper a reality, you'll just have to take matters into your own hands. To date, thousands of do-it-yourself McWhoppers have been created and shared on social media. Why is it a real thing? But this is the first time I've ever eaten a burger for world peace. I mostly just eat them because I'm hungry. social responsibility, you know, it's for peace day, um, but it's also doing a great job uh, for the client. Um, it's obviously selling a number of things, um, and as brain consideration is uh, really, really very, uh, very happy. But I think, you know, when you've got a great idea and you're really enjoying working on it, it shows in the work. I think that's that's really important. You know, when, you, when you're feeling good about what you're doing, um, you're putting in those extra hours. Uh, the work just... I don't know, it just has a tone to it. It's a, a hell of a lot of fun. So, you know, make sure you love your ideas um, and yeah, be really, really passionate about making your best ones happen. Um, funnily enough, my mother has never seen this. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I don't, don't take that personally. My uh, dad saw it, so it's okay. Um, and finally, yeah, look, I just think, you know, great ideas, there is something, there's something magical in there. Um, much like Star Wars, you know, we are on the right side. And I think the you know, creatives, bro, we are definitely, definitely on the right side. You know, balance everything, you know, you're doing for your corporate clients with something uh, pretty good. Uh, but, you know, for the world, if we can, it's, it's good getting 